New York City is known around the globe for its signature skyline and distinctive buildings that range from sophisticated to majestic to supremely elegant. It's also home to some of the world's most astonishing skyscrapers. Ismael Leiba has been an architect in the city that never sleeps for over 40 years. When very early age, I used to love to draw, and I used to draw pretty good. And I, I like sculptures also, I like to do sculptures. And I went for one year to the art school, and I discovered that um, it's a struggle for, for artists you know, to, to become recognized and, and make a, a good living. So I found that architecture was a combination of the two. Among the buildings he and his firm have designed are the Icon in Midtown, the Eves in Chelsea, 19 Park Place in Tribeca, and Place 57th near Sutton Place. He's also worked on the Time Warner Center at Columbus Circle. I'm originally from Veracruz, Mexico. Um, I did all my studies from first grade to high school in Veracruz. Those years, well, the only school, architectural school, was in Jalapa. So I moved to live in Jalapa, which was two hours away from, from my town, from Veracruz. I studied for five years in, in Jalapa. My father was a barber. As you know, as a barber, you never are rich or, uh, you know, you don't live a great life. You know, we were, you consider, not even middle class, we were poor, I would say, you know, some struggle. But my father as being a barber, he has a lot of friends through his business. They used to come for him to either do the mustache or the hair. They were rich people, you know, people that were in very high positions, uh, politicians. He used to cut the hair for one of the ex-presidents of Mexico and Veracruz. He, all his friends really were the same um, level, we are very high. So that was a very important because uh, my brother is a doctor and I'm an architect. And through those uh, friends, he always tried to help us. He could not do it with money or, you know, some people get a million dollars to start a business. For him, you know, he gave us to go to school and to get some of the friends to help us. And one of their friends bought a, a hotel in Acapulco. It uh, was under construction. And he came to my father and said, listen, I understand and smile, just finish school. Uh, I just bought a hotel. And uh, do you think he would like to, to go and finish the construction of the hotel? So I went. Next day, I took a bus. And I went and I stayed 10 months there. And uh, I finished the hotel. I actually. Uh, finish one of the, the rooms uh, and live in the hotel. I was a resident in the actual construction site. Um, and I learned a lot. I mean, I used to do everything. I have from buying material to paying the, the workers to redesigning things to be sure that everything is done perfectly. At the time, Acapulco was a top destination for travelers from the United States. President John F. Kennedy and his wife Jacqueline, President Donald Trump and his first wife Ivana, and Hollywood movie legend Elizabeth Taylor all spent their honeymoons there. As it turns out, Ismael found love there too. I stayed 10, ten months there, and in that period I met my first wife. She was on vacation in Acapulco. We became boyfriend and girlfriend. And she invited me to come to New York. She said, why don't you, when you finish the hotel, why don't you just come to New York? I have an apartment there, and you can stay as long as, you, as you, you like. Well, I came and I never went back. Well, it was very difficult in the beginning. Um, I came in 77, and New York City was coming out of a recession. 
And I, me, as an architect from Mexico, without any experience in, in America, I went to several interviews and just, I didn't get them. So finally, I, I saw in the newspaper an ad about a position in Hoboken, New Jersey, from an architect, Joseph Vitulo. I went to see him, and what he used to do is mostly, mostly renovations. In those days, Hoboken was really abandoned town, so the government used to give you a block of houses for one dollar, if you can show that you can actually, if you had the money to restore. I, I did that for another 10 months. I, I was with him, and um, he got to like my work. And one day he says to me, listen, um, I think you belong there. You belong in Manhattan. Let me see. Let me call my friend. So he called a friend, and, uh, and I, came, I came for an interview, and, uh, and I got a job. And I stayed in that company for close to 15 years. Um, I started as, as a draftsman. I escalated from draftsman to almost become a partner at the company. And things didn't work out when we were negotiating my partnership. In October 7, um, I started my business. What I did is I called a friend that used to have an, an architect, they used to have an office. So I asked him if, he could, if I could rent a corner with a desk and I, I can use the secretary and the telephone number, you know, for, for my business. He said yes. Talking to Ismael is like getting a lesson on how the architecture business operates. Often, it involves firms collaborating on a building together. You know, the first building I did, I did it with another architect, and that was, the, I think the reason was also I didn't have a name at that point. You know, nobody knew me except for my client. I was involved in, in the Trump International Hotel and Tower when I was with my other firm, Costas Candela's Architects. At that time, Costas' office and uh, Phil, Phil Johnson, they were associated in, in the building. Phyllis Johnson did the exterior, and we did everything else, which I was involved. I was the project manager then for that project. I designed all the apartments for the hotel and for the, for the condominiums. It's a little more difficult to coordinate with other architects' work, but, you know, it's done, and it's, it works. For example, in Time Warner, uh, we were five architects, and each architect has a component in the building. It was a mixed use. So we have an architect for the commercial part, another for the hotel, the theater, the offices, and I was the architect for the, the residential towers. The problem I have sometimes is that uh, you get lost in the mix, you know. Then usually you have five architects, but one architect is the one that gets the credit for everything. So sometimes they don't even mention you, you know, and it happens to me a lot of times, you know, and uh, they don't. Oh, you were at the arts. Yeah, I did this, that, and that. Ismael moved his team to another building in 1996. Soon after, they moved to their current location on West 37th Street in Midtown. And I've been here since 2000. And I got to the point where I got out of space, so I connected this floor with the floor below. These two floors are so about 70 people. I have uh, around 70 buildings in the tri-state area, uh, New York, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, some in, across the river in New Jersey. I love my work, and, I, and every project to me is, is, is unique and it's also important. It's one in particular then, because the dif difficulty of construction and designing for the size of the site. The site was it's only 24 feet in width, and it's a 43-story high building. The Icon, which is in 8th Avenue and 48th Street. Designing a product that can be sold well, and the construction also aspect, you know, it's, it was difficult. This Desert Park is the first res residential high-rise building in San Jose, Costa Rica. This was 11 floors. We were the first ones to design a high-rise building there, which was this. And then we have Paseo Colón, which is the tallest building in, in the country. It's a mixed-use building, has nine floors of offices. And then from the 10th floor to the 30th, there are condominiums. I just opened this office in 96. And unfortunately, my father died. He, he, he didn't get to see me grow as a, 
as a solo architect, you know, with my business. My mother did, my mother came, it's a picture of her there. She came in 2001, I believe. She, we took several pictures here and she, uh, I remember my, my mother's face. Yeah, she saw me going from um, Veracruz, being, uh, you know, having a pair of pants and she has to press and dry it for me to use it the next day because I don't have another one. To when she came here and saw what I accomplished, that was uh, very special for her. She, she didn't say much, but you, I could see her face, you know, that she was very proud, very, very proud. The, the most difficult part for me was to come to this country, uh, and I was an architect in Mexico. When I got here, they didn't recognize you as an architect. They recognize your studies, but they don't recognize your license as an architect. I had to work for three years under the supervision of a licensed architect to have the opportunity to take a test, which is a very difficult test. So you take a test, if you pass the test, then they give you the license. My fortune in the United States is that people appreciate your expertise. They didn't give me work here because uh, I'm from wherever I am or, or because I know somebody, because when I came here I didn't know anybody, you know, nobody. Uh, but I think they saw what I could give to them in their business and they appreciated it and they gave me work and that's how I, I grew and, and I got to what I got. So I'm very, I'm very thankful, you know, I'm a lucky, lucky person. Yeah.